This is one car that may change the landscape completely in the cheap end of the market, the genuinely cheap end of the market. So Hyundai just released their new little car recently announcing its facts and figures. So we can all know what to expect uh, when, it, when it is here at the end of this year. So it is so important that it will be one of the cars that will change the genuinely cheap end of the market. And as soon as I knew uh, the basics about it and ticked off two specific checkboxes, uh, and I established that they had not done the same silly things as most of the companies on the cheap on their cheap cars, I, I just genuinely really want one. I'll go over the awesome things about this car. Some things literally nobody's talking about, uh, which is really odd given the significance of these things. Uh, so there are two things I'm, I'm, I'm referring to. Uh, the car is the Hyundai Casper in the local Korean market. Really, really nice car. Uh, currently, it has a one litre petrol turbo engine in it in Korea. They, they're making it basically a mass market EV, which is really, really nice. Uh, it's converted to an EV. In other parts of the world, it will be known as the Hyundai Insta, but it's difficult when you Google that at current because there's not too much information on it after the release. It comes up as the Ionic 5 or Ionic 6. But it is called the Hyundai Ionic uh, Insta. So let's go over the bad points first. There are only a couple really. So the first one, it has NCM chemistry which is less stable and doesn't really like being left at full charge. Actually no chemistry does. Uh, you know, LFP chemistry suffers the least damage when left at full charge for, say, a month or two. Uh, there's a myth that LFP chemistry is completely fine and unfazed by being left uh, at full charge. This is not true. So N NCM chemistry is decent. Uh, it's very energy dense, but it doesn't do as well as LFP chemistry when we look at, say, for example, the remaining capacity after a thousand charge cycles and just, you know, discharges and cycle charge cycles, uh, or, or 2000, for example. Uh, so the smaller the battery, the more cycles you'll need to get to 100,000 miles, for example, or 200,000 kilometers. Uh, but there's a great reason to use NCM chemistry, which I'll go over in a minute, because it, there is a genuinely good reason. Uh, the car is a bit weird looking. It's not that nice at the back. Not too weird. Just a bit weird, you know? That's it really. I, I can't really complain any more than this because it's it's really a fantastic car. Maybe a bit too much tech inside for me, but the rest is subjective, I think. So now let's get on to the, get on to the good points. Uh, the advantage of using NCM chemistry is simply that it is way more energy dense than the other chemistries, basically. Lithium ion or LFP chemistry, lithium iron phosphate. Uh, so typically LFP chemistry has an energy density per kilo of 90 to 160 watt hours per kilo. NCM chemistry is 150 to 250. That's a significant jump. For a small car, obviously, especially this one, where it wasn't designed originally to be an EV, so there'll be less space underneath, it's going to be crucial to have as dense a battery chemistry as you can get in the car. Uh, and especially now because it's before the CATL chemistry is commonplace and we don't have any real other alternatives uh, that you know manufacturers can go by, this is, uh, this is going to make this car viable, I think, to have a real range where you can do 300, 350 kilometers on a charge. Uh, so with our small cars, I think we don't really want them to be stuck with small ranges. Small cars often referred to as city cars. Uh, I think, I, my personal belief, they should still be able to drive cross country or around Europe, for example, on long trips, in my opinion, not tethered to a city. That's just my opinion. I don't think they should only be able to do 110 kilometers on a charge uh, simply because it was cheap. I just don't think that's viable. Um, you know, the new Hyundai Insta has battery cooling using liquid technology to extract the heat from the battery and then it uses the AC to extract the heat from the car. Uh, but also it also heats it up in winter which is really really good. So this could be a really good car for Scandinavia maybe because the battery is quite uh, a reasonable size so it should be quite good even if you lose a bit of capacity in winter. Totally fine you know most I think most Scandinavians for example don't drive 300 kilometers a day to get to work. You know, you might do maybe one hour to get to work, one hour to get back, maybe, plus a small ferry ride, potentially. So this is amazing because uh, so many cars have been neglecting this over the past few years in the cheap end of the market. To have battery cooling on them is, is super important. And 
batteries of this size and value need to be kept from being too warm so they don't lose their capacity prematurely. Uh, it's a massive deal that companies like Datsia and Nis Nissan with the Nissan Leaf, really, really, really nice car, they neglected this for years. It's, it's really sad, I think. This is not so much my opinion on small batteries, you know, like e-bikes, things like that, but on a, on a car where a, an EV is considered a large battery on wheels, 110%, I think. They need to have full thermal uh, management on them. Uh, so the back seats fold totally flat as well. This is my other thing. I, I don't think any of you are going to be interested in this, but it is the it is the most practical thing. It is brilliant. Um, I've had a couple of Honda Jazzers, for example, which uh, fold completely flat. And if you're driving, say, for example, through Europe and you find yourself in the middle of Germany and you're a bit tired, you can have a nice nap. You can have a nice, a genuinely nice nap as if you have a bed. It's really, really nice. And it's a little hatchback simply because they've not done, for example, what BYD have done with the Seagull and, uh, and they've made it really flat in the back. It's just the most underrated thing, I think, uh, when manufacturers do this. You can literally as well, and I'm, 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 I'm going to guess you could do this with this car, but with a Honda Jazz, you can literally put the seats down and you can get a fridge. So like a, a fridge with two doors, not like a big double fridge with two doors, but just one door. You can get a fridge in the back of a Honda Jazz. It looks really crazy, but you really, really can. And so I think that is just a really valuable thing. And uh, when I noticed that this Hyundai has flat seats on the back when they fold completely flat, and then it also has battery cooling on it and a proper range, I'm sold. Honestly, if this is like 20,000 euro or 22 or 23, I will almost certainly be going to go buy one if if it's nice in real life. And I'm sure it is. I have a lot of confidence that it will be. Uh, so I don't know how these seats fold flat, actually, though. This is an interesting thing because under the car, obviously, it was it was originally a one litre turbo petrol car. Uh, so it isn't designed underneath to be a battery car. So they will have modified it somewhat, and typically there's always a, a, a bit less, a little bit less space in the car when manufacturers do this. So this is in, impressive that they've managed to get the seats to go super flat like that. It's a Hyundai. I think this is another pro. They're now considered well-made vehicles. Obviously, for years, some of you will know, I kind of put on a plinth Toyota, Honda. You can always trust that their switches are going to work. Their, their cars will do, you know, 100,000 kilometers, and you'll not have any issues and things are made well, uh, you know. But now other companies such as Hyundai are kind of pretty much pretty much catching them up. I mean, they are doing really, really well. I know people that have got Hyundais with 200,000 kilometers on them with zero issues at all. You know, that's pretty impressive. Uh, and they're, re they're really nice to drive. They're really good to look at. Pretty well priced, relatively speaking, when you comp compare them to Hondas and Subarus and, you know, Nissans and things like that. So they're well priced. I can't see any issues with this at all. There are two versions. You've got the standard range. We're unsure of the chemistry for the battery. They didn't tell us. Uh, this one has a motor with 71 kilowatts and 147 uh, newton meters of torque. And the battery is 42 kilowatt hour. And then you've got the big one, which is the one I would get. It has uh, a 49 kilowatt hour motor, uh, battery with NCM cells and 84 and a half kilowatts of power and 147 newton meters of torque. And that has 355 kilometers of provisional WLTP range. So not confirmed, but it is provisional 355 kilometers of range. Expect 300, you know? I think if you drive steady and you're being careful, 300 in summer, for example, or 320 or 330, something like that. It has vehicle to load, 230 volts. It has that adjustable regenerative regenerative braking, uh, 11 kilowatt onboard charger for when you're at home, 120 watt DC fast charging. So when you're out in public, you can charge quickly. 10 to 80% in 29 or 30 minutes. It has a heat pump uh, and the long range version is slightly quicker. So not to 100 kilometers per hour is 10.6 seconds. And top speed is 150 kilometers per hour, which is really good if you're in France, for example, because everyone's everyone drives like crazy in France. When I was in France recently, people were going 160, 170, 150 past me, and I was going 130. 
So that, you know, they're pretty fast, I think, in France. Uh, a little slower for the short range version and a little bit less power, but it's, it's yeah, not very much at all. So I would say that the good points definitely outweigh the bad points. The two main things that I want to see being checked off here, they are actually checked off, which is just pff, super cool. And it's not, you know, 38,000 euro. It's like 20, 22, 23,000 euro, that sort of thing. Uh, and then you've got whatever subsidies you can get. Is it actually cheap? I think it is actually a cheap car, isn't it? Not relative to a Tesla, but it's just a cheap car. Uh, and does the battery have full, full cooling on it? Yes, it does, which is brilliant, especially if you live in a place like Greece or Italy or the south of France. I think a lot of people can see that the next 12 to 24 months are going to see uh, this whole new emergence of a market that we've never seen before. The market is going to change to a very different place uh, because of cars like this. That's, I think it's the most exciting thing. This is now like where my channel gets to just enjoy doing what it does. I, I talk about all sorts of cars, Tesla Model 3s, Model Ys, I don't know, BYD Atto 3s and things like that. But you know, I've got this passion for small, cheap cars that ordinary people can buy. And I'm excited to to uh, to show you that when they come in, in the next year or two. So that you've also got the Leap Motor T03, the BYD Seagull coming to Europe, and the Tesla Model 2, which will, which will be released all in the next 24 months. So uh, yeah, that's really nice. I just wanted to thank you all as well for watching my videos. Uh, I've been getting more views, subscribers, comments lately, and I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate it. I appreciate you giving even just a minute of your time. It's really generous and, uh, you know, thank you. Um, I work really hard on my videos and I think it's uh, worth pushing uh, the small and cheap end of the market, which is obviously uh, the most important section of the market based on the fact that it's going to benefit more people, uh, not just those people that can afford a swanky EV uh, or afford to get one a bit too expensive, you know, to, to, to what they would ordinarily buy, but they could get it on credit because it's an EV and it offsets the cost or something like that. As soon as I get a chance to drive it and as soon as I get the chance to uh, film it, I will do that for you and I'll do some tests and um, I'll also do a 4k close-up video that I like to do with pretty much all new cars that are really that are, have like a the, the, the important cars the mg4 tesla model 3 highland for example or refresh and I call those my quality control chip videos and uh, I think almost everybody likes them I think uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next video tomorrow